Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the launch celebration. Marcus, this is going to be an absolutely awesome show. Like we have practice, we know what this is about, but they have no idea what is going on today. Well, it's all about Intel Core 14th Gen, a new generation of Intel desktop processors. And of course, we always talk about performance. Uh, we're gonna talk about overclocking, undervolting. We're gonna see some builds. Um, this is the place to be if you wanna learn all about our new processors and actually see them being put into systems. But at the heart of that, are these bad boys that you're seeing right here on the screen, right? That's that's why we're here. Again, brand new processor family uh, for 14th gen. I should say it is a refinement it of, is. It of, is. of like a new architecture. I still call it really new. It debuted in 12th gen with Alder Lake, um, and we made big strides in it with Raptor Lake. This one, the code name of it is Raptor Lake Refresh. Again, that's 14th gen. And you know what? I think there's so much appreciation and love for Raptor Lake that we're calling Raptor Lake Refresh because it is a refinement of a great microarchitecture, great uh, performance hybrid, and I think that that is this is the culmination. This is the best iteration of the Intel Seven process, uh, the P cores, the E cores, and I think the the mature ecosystem and the refined silicon. You're gonna we're gonna talk about how how those are paying off dividends. So the big question that I know that everybody kind of comes out to is like, hey, you know, we just came off of you know 13th gen. We now have this refinement. What are we talking about in terms of performance uplift for this particular this particular generation? Again, it, it's a refresh wrap. Yep, like, exactly. And I think that the, here it's it, it's all about Intel's all about performance. Yep. Okay. And we never want to leave any performance on the table. So if there's more performance to be had, even out of an existing architecture, we definitely want to unlock that uh, for our users, right? So you're going to see gains, um, you know, at the very top bin. We okay, we're going to talk more about that. In fact, we can talk there's about a, there, now. There's a right, right there, so, yeah. So, like, so we're talking because like they know what's. They, it's like they know what we want to talk about. <laughs> these showrunners, they know what they're doing. Uh, sometimes more than we do. Yeah. Um, so what you're seeing right there, of course, this is we're talking these cl big claims on uh, the Core i9, right? So six gigahertz out of the box, and we'll go through Core i9 and Core i7. And six gigahertz is a big deal. That's huge because for 13th gen, six gigahertz was a milestone right. for a specialty product called the the KS, right? Yep. The 13900 KS, and here, the i9. You get this. Six gigahertz, six gigahertz. Out of the box, volume part, right? That was like a really niche product for just, just for the people who wanted to have the best. Yep. The best is here, and it's even better because we got better boost clocks, higher boost clocks, even on the Core i9 over the KS. So honestly, this is this is like a, a, a really big gain for this one. Of course, game performance, really important creator workflows. That's something special for creators for i7. But uh, yeah, we have a lot to talk about for both those. So. And, and guys, we are just getting started. This is a long show. There's a lot to go in there. Now, the other thing that is huge with this generation, and we, 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 we're, we're going to use the word accoutrements, and one of those accoutrements is connectivity, right? Like, what are all of the, con the new connectivity options that come with Raptor Lake Refresh in this case? Yeah, I, I think that ultimately this is about a platform, right? It's more we can talk about the chips by itself, yep. but there are more connectivity, right? You got USB 3.2, um, Wi-Fi 7, which we'll get into a little bit yep. later. Uh, and when you talk about you know accoutrements, we have other software features that are really great to unlock more performance. Um, but yeah, as you can see right here, um, you know, in the past couple of generations, you've heard us talk about Wi-Fi 6. You really talk about that six gigahertz band that gives you a lot more of that dedicated channel, a uh, dedicated band in Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi 7 takes to the next level, we'll talk about some of those really cool technologies that give you, you know, double, triple uh, the gains for both like bandwidth and latency. Um, and of course, for wired connectivity, Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 4, again, best in class. Uh, Thunderbolt 5, just around the corner. As we talked about before, it's joining the big class of fives. Yeah, that we're, we, got, that we're really, we got fives everywhere. Yeah, we got point, PCI 5, DDR 5, you know, Thunderbolt 5 is around the corner, but Wi-Fi 7, there. That's, that's just ahead of the class by being, you know, two more than five. Um, but let's let's bring it back to the the processors right now. So yeah, and the, and this and this is important, right? Because each one of them, like across the band, like the big thing about the thirteen six, the th oh, sorry, the fourteen six, the fourteen seven, and the fourteen nine. Wow, even I am getting used to the the fact that this is launched. Is that we've seen improvements across the board on each one of them, and even one of them, like you're talking about refinement, is like you guys basically it was like the master sword uh, when you came about the fourteen seven, right? Like it has been it has been um, you know. Uh, hand made to be like the most impressive uh, from the 14.7 perspective and stuff like that. So yeah, let's talk about the process yeah. specifically. So so let, let, let me say what enables all these gains that we've yep. had this one is that again, Intel 7 process, it's a refined process, right? Yep. The manufacturing process, the fabrication, they know how to get a lot of quality, re uh, really good dyes, right? Really good binning. So out, out of there, it's like 
why was 13900 KS such a special product? It's yep. because we had binning specifically to find the best silicon that can reach 6 gigahertz. Now we can do that for all the i9s. And the binning process has said, hey, we're going to have more, more chips out of the wafer that has more e-cores right. that are completely reliable, 100%. And that's why you're seeing four additional e-cores on the i7. So you're getting like, uh, like um, base clocks and boost clocks, gains of 1 to 200 megahertz in some cases. But the big one is you're getting eight p-cores and 12 e-cores on the i7. Now, you mentioned overclocking, right? Yep. Of course, that's, again, like, we didn't want to leave any performance on the table. Correct. There's always more to be had uh, by those who, you know, will, are, are uh, adventurous enough to go in and tweak and tune the knobs. Now, the thing is, we want to make it accessible, overclocking to be accessible for everyone. And, of course, you know, I think that this generation definitely says we got some really great silicon. Let's put it in the hands of enthusiasts, which is why we're launching today. Yep. Right? All these, all uh, six, each one has a K and a KF with graphics or not, but these variants are unlocked for overclocking, undervolting, that sort of thing. But we didn't, we don't want to just have under overclocking as, as a dark art that people need to, you know, read a bunch of manuals or seek, there's, there's no secrecy behind this. So we want to make it really easy. The, uh, the uh, Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, or XDU, Put all of that in software, right? On your desktop, no messing in the BIOS, anything like that. Um, and it makes it really accessible. And for years, we've had this tool called the Intel Speed Optimizer, which is your one-click overclocking. Yep. And that's great. It gets you, you know, like a small little bump. And from there, you're like, great. You got, you got more free performance of the box. But we're going to take another step further by using AI. Now, and a lot of people talked about AI, but these are actually machine-trained models. OK, yeah, that was important, right? Because a lot of times when you talk about AI, a lot of people are like, what, is it, what does it actually do? And, th and then the term AI gets thrown around a lot. But you've had some very smart people. This is actual machine learning to help basically get the most out of your CPU. And you made it very easy for anybody who picks up a 14900K to be able to use this. So I actually went to the lab that they're doing the training for this, okay. for the machine learning. So they basically spent a ton of time using a lot of machines, configurations, and then a machine learning thing to make it so people can easily overclock. Oh, well, well yeah. And, uh, and you know across what? Across all of them? And or? it's taking it to the next level. So right now, they're doing hundreds of configs right. i9. This actually takes time to train that model. Right. So right now it's trained for the i9 at first. It's a preview feature, by the way. If you log in, you'll see it's a preview feature. Okay. And by the way, this is available today. Okay. It's the current version of XTU that you can uh, that you can download. So it's in there, get an i9, and this is a great starting point, right? Whether you're a seasoned overclocker, you're just getting started. This gets you further than you would get an Intel Speed Optimizer. Nice, and it works across all platform, motherboard, anything. It's it's good to go. That's the big one, right? We we uh, a lot of respect to our partners, right? You're going to hear from one today with their own AA overclocking solution, but this one is platform agnostic, and you can run it, and this will work on um, you know 700 series, 600 series. Wow. I9, okay. I9 at first, but yeah, this is preview, and there are training more CPUs every day. Again, it, this is AI, AI Assist is baked in to XTU, so you can play with it today. It's available. Download XTU. The thing is, it is one of the safest ways to get into overclocking. We're going to show you, like, there is some other stuff that comes with that as well. But if you have any issues, you, you crash, whatever, it resets your stuff. It's very, very easy. So if you want to get into it and start it, this is the way to do it. But I'm really excited about the video because this is makes it even easier to find a yep. great starting yep. place, especially if you have a 14900. Yeah, this is all about making overclocking accessible. Yep. It's free performance, right? Any A lot of us got into overclocking because you said, wait a minute, I can get more performance yep. by paying no money. I know. This is there? stuff that's already there. Yeah. Right, right. And that's that's been kind of the ethos behind 14th Gen. It's like, there's performance to be had in the architecture, in the silicon. We're going to unlock it. And with overclocking, you can get even more. It really does make overclocking that easy. And we're talking about true overclocking. I mean, the fact that it actually sent temperature limits on the uh, primary two cores, like at 90 and 80. Guys, that is stuff that usually when you start tweaking, that's like hardcore, and you're seeing that done in 30 seconds. And the thing is, this is actual machine learning. This is taking uh, your cooling into account, what motherboard you have, like a bunch of stuff that goes in there using machine learning, and then giving you a stable overclock. And that kind of overclock, you were seeing like 616045, those, that's an actual, that's a real jump in performance. Even 450 watts, I mean, taking all the limits away. And that's, that's the idea, right? Again, I keep saying we want to leave no performance on the table. Intel Speed Optimizer, again, supported for multi-generations, it really is a one-size-fits-all. But to be customized in different parts of silicon, different variations, different system configurations, and again, the engineers right now are testing hundreds of configurations, and that's why you're seeing some variability. But it's getting you close to the upper limits. Now, the great thing I like about AI Assist um, versus the Intel Speed Optimizer is that you can start 
with the AI assist, and then you can go in and tune the knobs yourself yeah. to get even more. And again, that's a game of overclocking. Once you, I think it's addictive. Once you get started, and you're like, wait, what if I, what if I change this, or can I get a little bit more? Or what if I upgrade my cooling? So that is, I mean, for anyone who's into any other hobby, but like cars especially, it's like you make these little changes, and you're just going to be down the rabbit hole. And don't worry, guys. We are absolutely going to be showing you. We are actually going to be showing you some of the XTU because one of the things that came up in chat, somebody said, I wonder how XTU would work on my laptop. Funny you should ask because let's, we're going to talk about the other side, the same side of the coin with undervolting, which has actually become very, very popular. I never thought about the fact that I could use XTU. Like taking this and using this, on uh, the uh, on my laptop as an option to basically get more power out of it, and we only saw a minor increase in overall heat, which was actually crazy, mm -hmm. right? And then you saw the overall boost, uh, you know, saw a good boost, you know, better higher core clocks overall, right? And like it, it's just efficiency. And the one thing we want to get from people who are watching the show is that you shouldn't feel like you're leaving any performance on the table. You're there right. are no slow processors. Yep in this lineup. It's like fast, faster, fastest. That's that's what it is. So looking at it, you're really starting from a very high baseline. And you're not pi you're not pigeonholed here, right? Like again, you this is not just something that's like it, this isn't just gaming. This is gaming, streaming, encoding, workflows. Like I mean, there are like anything that you can do. There is no limitation here when you're looking at a 14600K. You can do everything you wanted to do from a creator standpoint. And the other thing too is that this is overclockable as well, right? There's no limitation there as well. Yeah, and and I know that you know we're so used to working at the very latest technology, and we yep. have to like really take a step back and really appreciate that this is the same performance hybrid architecture that we started with Alder Lake. And in that generation, there were i5s that had no e cores. Yep. Right. And those are like fantastic processors. Yep. The p cores are just amazing. But here, looking at six p cores, eight e cores, you have all the benefits. Intel Thread Director. If we have time, we'll talk with that a about uh, that a little bit more. Yep. But ultimately, the i5 is, you know, you, you said to me before off camera that that is, that is the one that the community, the builders, it's a great way to jump in and you get tons of performance. Yeah, and again, 13th gen, it was my favorite, one of my favorite CPUs from 13th gen. Not because, not because I, I didn't love the 14.9, I mean, sorry, the 13.9 and the 13.7, it's just, it was such a workhorse. This is just the workhorse with more forging, right? Like this is the best of the core i5, I mean the i5, yeah. So yeah, I can't, I, I can't, I can't be upset. <laughs> now, of course, we're going to move up the line a little bit. Oh right? yes, yeah, this one. Uh, this is the one that everybody's excited about, right? Because this, like, unlike the other ones where we've seen like some improvements in boost clock and stuff, this got extra features. <laughs> yep, and and I have to say, like, this is you know, there there is value at every line, and the i5 remains a very strong value performance, but. I, I think the you know the the engineers and and the fab workers at Intel's really outdid themselves by the refinement of the silicon. Right. This is like a really really great harvest. Yep. And that harvest has enabled the i7 gets additional e cores, right? So we're we're dealing with um, eight p cores and a twelve e cores. Twenty cores. Twenty cores. Twenty on cores. an i7. On an i7. And I mean, if you are a content creator, if you're somebody who's into content creation, this is this is. Uh, hopefully, your ears perked up because yep. again, you got those p cores for your gaming, for uh, like your main threads, all that sort of stuff. And now you've got e cores that allow you to do a whole lot more. Now, one of the things that I also want to talk about because we, you know, we saw some of the stuff in the chat, people talking about motherboards. They actually have seen, even though we haven't seen a change in chipset, we have seen a number of motherboards that have come out with a lot of these connectivity options and stuff like that. But the one thing is, is that people need to understand is that you don't need to buy the most expensive motherboard to go with your Intel processor. Now, that's a great point, especially for a yeah. build show like yep. this. Is one is we're starting with a lot of new builds here, right? And you're seeing people build, build very easily, expertly, very yep. quickly. But the fact is, as an upgrade path or even someone has the choice of motherboards, 14th gen will plug right into 600 series, 700 yep. series. Now, again, Make sure you've got the right BIOS. You have to have the latest update. But this opens up so many options, right? You said a lot of motherboard makers have new updates with more connectivity, Wi-Fi 7. We're going to talk about that with lots of love there. But ultimately, you have a mature ecosystem for motherboards, more choices for upgrades. And you know, I think that is something that the ecosystem, our ecosystem partners really, really appreciate. And again, by the way, if you were, if you were a builder in 12th gen with Alder Lake, of course, we were switch switching to the LGA uh, 1700 socket. And of course, you had to uh, you know, really be mindful of the type of cooler that you put on. Here, that stuff is completely figured out, right? It's very easy, plug and play, no problem. And I think that's, that's kind of, uh, it's, it's for, for the builders, especially for those who just want no hassle. I think there's a lot of appreciate for having them. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of people have said, 
I do I need two systems to game and stream? And do I need other encoders? You don't need two systems. Like if you're talking about saving money, and all of a sudden it's like, well, do I do I have to buy two two thousand dollar systems or can I buy one four thousand dollar system? You actually the thing is you could buy a fifteen hundred dollar system and still do the same thing and not have any issue at all, right, Marcus? No, that's right. And I think that's that's one of the the big takeaways with the entire 14th gen. Um, is this architecture has so much capability. I know today we're talking a lot about gamers, right? We a lot talk about games. There's one of the, the the leading apps that really drives innovation here. But the fact is people do a lot of things. You may you may not believe it, but people do other things with the computers than what? Than, 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 what? than just games. But like for creation workloads, I think that like being a well rounded, high performance system, I think that's something where fourteenth gen really shines, right? And now, you know, it's funny. I think this is a good segue talking about gaming because there is a new form of gaming that is starting to show up, and that is cloud gaming. And connectivity starts to become more important because the other thing, too, is like we're not always going to be tethered. This is where um, Wi Fi 7 starts to actually make it so it's if you have a crazy powerful rig at home with Wi Fi 7, at some point in time, you'll be able to do cloud connections with things like Steam Link or whatever it was that allow you to play games. But Wi-Fi 7 is more than just that, and that's something that is also coming around with 14th Gen as well. So let's talk a little bit about Wi-Fi 7 and why it's cool. I think generally Wi-Fi, it's like, oh, no, I, the Wi-Fi I have at my home, people are just very, it's, it's like my light fixtures. They're fine, and I think that just you yourself, you know, like pre-show and rehearsals, we're talking about Wi-Fi 7, and you yourself, I gave you enough curiosity, you looked at it, and you're like, this is Really, this is insane. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm almost assured that you are going to go home and upgrade. Oh, I've network. actually already ordered. A, <laughs> I mean, yeah. So it's happening. I've already started talking to companies because I'm like, I want to. Because, like, let's let's just go through like the benefits of Wi-Fi Seven because it's not just it's not just faster speed. There's actually way more with Wi-Fi Seven than just the connectivity itself. Yeah. First of all, it's, it's latency. You talk about cloud gaming. Yep. But ultimately, there's latency um, improvements down to like single digit millisecond now on Wi-Fi 7. So, I mean, for people who are chasing every advantage, Wi-Fi 7, now again, I'm sure a lot of people are saying, I'm going to plug in Ethernet, but that may not be practical for everyone and exactly. every Exactly. Believe it or not, guys, there's actually a lot to be excited about with Wi-Fi 7. And the other thing, too, is similar to the leap from Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6 to 6E, 7 was actually a pretty massive jump, and not just because of the bandwidth, but also some other things that you're about to hit on, which is game changing, right? Yeah, latency is a big one. Reliability, I think first of all, I'm just going to go say that you get gigabit speeds further out, right? Because yep. a lot of it is function of how far you are away from the router. Yep. The fact that it can do, let's say on, on a computer, um, we're looking at over five gigabits per second. But the fact is, you know, if you're, if you're pulling something from the internet and you've got gigabit internet, you can hold that gigabit from further out. We talked about the new six gigahertz yep. uh, band for Wi-Fi 6E. Yep. Now on Wi-Fi 7, same deal, you get this it's kind of like um, if you're driving, if you think about bands as, uh, as like a highway, you got more lanes, and this lane is like dedicated, right? So you get more exclusive use of the band, uh, multi-link operation. So we've this talked about- This is important. Yeah, this, this is really- this, this, is, is, this is very cool, because this is new. This right. does not exist. You know, if you know anything about your routers, you know you got the 2.4 gigahertz uh, band, you've got the 5 gigahertz band, 6. What if, what if you could use all three of those bands at once to transfer all your data? So that way you can have more efficient, not just six, six gigahertz band. Yep. And by the way, this also works for redundancy. So you could push a whole bunch of data on different links, or if your data is really important, you can be redundant. You can send the same information on the two different bands, and they'll get there, right? So it, it's, uh, um, and the other one is um, the 4K QAM. Yep. Right, and that one is basically just making more efficient use of that channel. So there's a ton of technology. The more you read about it, the more I read about it, the more impressed I am. And um, and honestly, like I think it's time that people look at their Wi-Fi because we can talk about our builds. Yep. We can talk about overclocking. We can talk about adding your cooling, overclocking your memory, which we will get to in a second. But overall, upgrading your Wi-Fi is it's like upgrading the the entirety it's of, like the of your house. It's the infrastructure. Yeah. And the other thing too is that as more smart as more smart devices come online, as AI becomes a bigger part of things, like there is going to be more connectivity. And the believe it or not, like having the the link between bands. Things like uh, multi-leak operation, which is just going to be, which also helps with security and data redundancy and all that other stuff. Guys, more stuff is moving to cloud, and Wi-Fi Seven is, in a lot of ways, has like a lot of the base, uh, a lot of the baseline that you need for that. But oh wait, one more. I want to shout out to to our partners, right? right? Because we talk about you can use your 600 series boards, 700 series boards, and a lot of the new ones that are being updated with Z790. Exactly. Yep. Have Wi-Fi Wi-Fi Seven. Wi -Fi 7. Yep. 
in there. So that's, cool. that's, 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 a, that's another nod to the new platforms. We don't have new MOBOs, but a lot of these newer ones that just got announced with the launch of, 14th, uh, of your uh, 14th gen uh, CPUs have Wi-Fi 7 uh, as well. So, I mean, again, if people want to start jumping into this, you could have a PC if you built something with uh, 14700, 14.6, or 14.9 that has Wi-Fi 7, and you get access to, this, access to this stuff now. And yes, there are routers, and they do range in a bunch of different prices. Um, so you do you can... The jump isn't as expensive as, as I think we initially thought. <laughs> no. no, again, here's the thing about Wi-Fi is that it's backwards compatible with all the previous ones. Exactly. Right? So you could have these legacy, you know, uh, devices that are on... Your phone. You know, yeah. 802.11b, yeah. right? And, and you can have those. Those will absolutely work. It's just that you want to start um, the foundation. Yep. A good foundation uh, and upgrade on Wi-Fi. And the fact is, it's, it's, if you look at it, it's 2.4 times faster than the previous Wi-Fi. Yep. Right? But if you're doing file transfers within your house, we're getting to the point where... You may not need to run Ethernet for even for data intensive uh, workloads applications inside your home. You know, having Ethernet is nice. It's not always practical, especially now with great gaming mobile devices and maybe you want to move from place to place. Um, you, can't even, you can't take an Ethernet cable yep. all over your house. All right, now just to recap, right? The Core i9 14900K, world record 9043.92. If you okay. want to be exact. Okay. Just to be exact, to be fair. That's an HW bot, world record, but DDR5. Okay, memory DDR5. Overclock. You can overclock your processor, your memory player. The DDI, DDR5 world record, 11,613 megatransfers. 11,613 megatransfers. That is absolutely insane. I, you know, so that's, that's, that's bonkers. There's another tool that we actually have hit on just very lightly. So we've talked about... We've talked about AI Assist. We've talked about, we're going to talk a little bit about XMP, but there's another tool as well that's um, application optimization. That's right? right. Intel APO. That's again, that's application optimizer. Currently, right now, the APO is available on the i9, right? Just early on. And what that does is it, it works in conjunction with Thread Director to make sure that the right threads are properly optimized to assign thread affinity to the right cores. And um, you know, right now, Again, early on, but we're seeing gains in like Rainbow Six and Metro Exodus of I think like 13 to 16 percent improvement, just with a little click of a slider, right in the uh, application. Yeah, so you software. just you basically turn this on, and then with this just flipping this one switch, and this is this even is this is even better when devs have done a really great job in terms of optimizing their game. Then this is additional 13 percent on top of all of the other performance that you're going to get. So think about you know 13 percent in something like Rainbow Six. That could literally do that could push you from like 500 to 525 frames per second. There's your 520 hertz monitor or a 360 hertz monitor, and that's all stuff that's new with the new 14th gen. Uh, Core i9. Yep, and and of course, this is early days for the software. Yeah. It's going to get better. There'll be more games supported. So again, it's available on the Microsoft Store. Um, so anyone with a Core i9 can mm -hmm. dabble in and Don't just worry. again unlock more performance out of the architecture. You know, we've mentioned many times how to make overclocking easy. Yes. And I know throughout the show you've seen several mentions of Intel XMP, and again, that's the Intel Extreme Memory Profile. That's to make memory overclocking easy. Just like AI Assist, just like uh, APO, just like Thread Director. This is stuff that just is easy to just have and get extra performance. And by the time, like, like I said, by the time we get to the show, with the last thing we're covering here with XMP, you should leave no performance on the table. These are all things that you can just use with your, uh, your Core i9 and basically get the most out of your CPU without having to be an expert. One button, one slider, and it's good to go. So let's talk about XMP. Yeah, and I'm going to bring it back a little bit to something that we mentioned earlier in the show, yeah. is the really mature yields. Right now we're getting in silicon on 14th gen, and that means there's benefits to uh, the integrated memory controller. Yep. So we, we've, we're talking about, um, realistically, over 8,000 megatransfers on some of these XMP modules. And we're looking at potentially 8,600 uh, megatransfers per second. Now, it's, it's all really easy, right? And if you don't want to mess with uh, frequencies, voltage, timing on memory, you've got Intel XMP. Obviously, the, the new silicon has made these fantastic, some of the best overclocking platforms. And you know, I think the great part about the show that we're doing now, everyone tuning in, is that we shine the spotlight on these unlocked processors, right? i5, i7, i9, all unlocked for overclocking. Um, again, 
like you mentioned, we have some early preview software like like the AI Assist um, method of overclocking. But ultimately, uh, Intel XTU, free software you can download. Um, something that, that, that is new as well is that you don't have to use the Intel software. The Intel XTU SDK, you can now find that being used by Foundation Toolkit. That's foundationtk.com. And you can find other ways um, to overclock your, your CPU. And really, it's made easy. If there's one takeaway you should have on this is that getting the most performance out of your system should be really easy. I want to say, like back in the day, regular overclocking felt as complicated and as you know skill required as right. that. It really is a lot of inner workings between timings, voltages, like all sorts of things that are interconnected. Um, that that's why you know that's why I was so impressed when we showed the AI optimizer. Right, like you were actually seeing even thermal limits on basically temperature things on two of the cores, which is stuff that's usually pretty uh, pretty advanced, right? You usually see that with people who are making very, very dialed in profiles. And what essentially AI Optimizer is performing for you is something that's super stable. That's probably, I don't know, very close to what you would get. And then you can then go and tweak and find out what you got. I mean, it's, it's a very good starting point, right? And we, which we said about um, Intel Speed Optimizer. This one, it brings you even closer uh, for, you know, to, to get started with overclocking. And again, we're, we saw a pro at work. Um, and, and this is what this just takes it. This is literally the world's fastest desktop processor. And there's world records being broken all over the place to confirm this at this point in time. A lot of times people are like, wow, it's like that mystical, magical. It's really not. And Intel's providing the tools to help people be able to get in on getting the most out of their new CPUs. And, and by the way, it's time for us to really you know, enjoy technology. We, we, we all love building PCs, um, new CPUs. And I think that what's fun about this one is that we had so much rolling technology out with, again, Alder Lake 12th gen, talking about the performance hybrid architecture, um, thread director. And I think we, this is the time that we really get to enjoy like the maturity and really like the, the refinement of the technology we have today. We spend so much of this time working up to launches, just really focusing on, on the processor itself. And I think that part of a really rewarding uh, part of today's show was actually seeing what people can build yep. around processor, right? Because it's the whole system, the motherboard, everything, the cooling, the artistry that honestly happens uh, behind these builds. So I think it really, it's really rewarding and pay pays off. It was, it was, it was so, it was so incredibly cool to see. Like we've done everything with the i5, the i7, and the i9. You guys have given the people at the enthusiast level all of the tools they need to get the most out of it. Very simply, it's like I get done with my system and I'm not going to have to spend. Two out, you know, 200 million hours, right? I just basically turn on and flip some switches, run a 30, 30 seconds, 30 second AI optimizer, and I'm overclocked, XMP's on, um, I can turn on APO, and I'm basically good to go. Guys, we really do hope that you enjoyed and learned something on today's show. And then if you want to continue the conversation and learn more, you can always work with Intel over at discord.gg slash Intel. It's a great place to go and continue this conversation. People like Marcus, Alex, Sarah, and all of those people who are basically there to help you guys uh, learn more. And then, of course, talk to the community as you uh, start your journey. And one more thing, again, I want to thank um, everyone who's been tuning in, uh, watching some of the great videos that we typically put on the Intel Technology YouTube channel. Yep. You saw a slice of that, but we have plenty more in the works. So subscribe to that channel and um, we'll see you on there. That's it for us, guys. We'll see you guys on the next show.